All right, now, on my trip to Oregon, I picked up yet another tool. I make no apologies. Oh well. This is a Boxmaster uh, negative brake scraper, and I'm gonna make a tool handle for it. Now, this is not round stock, obviously, so how do we do that? Stay tuned and I'll show you how I make a handle for this that's interchangeable. I can take it out and put it back in because it's double-ended. One end of this tool, this end right here, is for the inside of a box. And this end, that's pointing in the other direction, is for the outside of a box or a bowl even that you want to use this tool. So stay tuned and let's make a tool handle. All right, now let me show you how I constructed this tool handle from the inside out. I have plowed a groove in the center of this with my router. And there's the piece of steel sitting inside that groove. I've got that piece of wood cut in half. You get the idea that the tool will sit inside. And there's a view of that. And I'll put the other side of that piece of wood on and eventually I'll glue that together. And it'll sit in there like that and I can just remove that piece of metal and use the other end as well. All right, I have my tool handle all clamped together and I'm going to take the clamps off and show it to you. Now I obviously need to uh, take this on my bandsaw and kind of cut it down. I added a couple pieces of walnut to either side of this wood in the center and that's uh, just some mahogany. And the blade will fit in there. So let me do a little bit of whittling down on my bandsaw. We'll take this over on the lathe and we'll make it round. Now to secure the tool into the handle, I'm going to put a couple of inserts into this part of the handle and I've drilled that out. And I'll give you a close up of those inserts. And then inside there is a bolt with a Allen wrench head on it. And I'll show you how that goes into the wood. And I drilled this out while it was still square. I thought that would be a little bit easier than doing it later on when it's round. And I think this will be a good way to secure that tool steel into the handle. And the next step is to take this over on the lathe and make it round. All right, I've got my tool handle chucked up into my chuck jaws. And I'm going to form a tenon on one end of this and reverse it so it's in there a little bit more securely and safely. And I can also remove my tool handle and take it out and put it back in if I need to. It'll be a little bit easier if I do that. So let me readjust the camera and I'll do a little turning on this. All right, now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply take this down to round. I'm gonna put a tenon on this end and reverse it into my chuck. I'm going to put my tool handle into my pin jaws and I've got a little bit of a 
spigot there, not a whole lot, not very deep, I should say. But for the most part, I'm going to have this between centers probably 98% of the time. Bring up my tailstock. Now I feel the main focus of this video is not necessarily turning this tool handle, but putting it together and showing how I uh, put the inserts into the handle to hold the tool steel. So I'm going to kind of rush through a lot of this video that I have turning this particular piece. And right now I'm using a skew chisel and some of that footage you couldn't see very well so I just eliminated it. Okay, here's a little bit better shot of the skew chisel. And I've got red marks on here to indicate where my inserts are, or where they will be, I should say. And I want to leave those points a little bit high so I have more meat in the tool handle uh, to put the inserts in. I'm just making some leveling cuts and some planing cuts to bring that down to the final dimension. And I'm marking the placement of those inserts once again. And I just test fit the tool handle to my hand. It's not very long, but that's really all I need for this particular handle. And here's a much better shot of the skew chisel and we're just about done the last clip or so I will cut this off part it off and in the meantime I've applied a little bit of an oil finish and some wax and also I've applied some grooves at the top and the bottom you can see them right now and burnt those in a little bit I've got a little parting tool that I'm going to part this handle off and then we'll go over and we'll put the inserts into the handle. Now you'll see in the upcoming three or four minutes that this tool really does work quite well. I have a piece of my cast resin chucked up into my lathe and I'll just uh, run this tool through the paces and you'll kind of see how well it works. Uh, off camera I put the inserts into my tool handle and they work very well. It doesn't take much to flip this tool around and right now it is in the inside cutting orientation and in a little bit I'll show you how it cuts on the outside. It's pretty much the same operation and technique. This is a very good tool. I really like it a lot. And here's another view of this tool working on the inside of this cast resin piece. And it really doesn't take off very much. Uh, how much it cuts really depends on the burr. And I don't have much of a burr on here. I wanted to be careful and not get a catch on this. It's a little bit thin, so there's some of the shavings I'm getting off that. Now this is the very end of another piece of cast resin, and it's really out of balance. You can't really tell it very well from this angle, but it's probably a quarter of an inch out of round on the very end of this, and I'm taking some pretty good aggressive cuts on this and trying to level that surface off. And that's the beauty of a negative rake scraper. You can uh, use a little bit more force and anyway here there's some great shots of that uh, ribbon of plastic coming off the end of this piece. And it's just kind of cool. I've got the tool rest positioned in a different location next to the blank and I'm just uh, running that tool along the very end of that 
cast resin piece. The tool works great. Made by Boxmaster. I'll put a link in the description to this tool and they've got quite a number of different sizes for these scrapers. Here I'm using the other end of the tool on the outside of this piece. And the shavings really uh, collect very quickly. I, I don't get a good shot of this because it just covers the outside of the tool. So I got to keep this clear with my toothbrush periodically. And this shot shows that I'm holding the tool right towards the end. It's not at all grabby. It doesn't uh, take a lot of force to hold it in position and do a pretty good job cutting. Well, I'm right near the end of this video and I appreciate you hanging in there with me. This is a great little tool and it's always fun making a tool handle because it's very personal and it's easy to do. You can just use a scrap piece of wood or two. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in once again. It's great to be back in Wyoming, but it was also a, a really good experience visiting Oregon and Washington and making some new friends out there. So I hope to get back to that Oregon wood turning symposium someday. And uh, anyway, I will talk to you later. Thank you very much.